In 2021, Daniel Craig, the actor in the James Bond movie, said in an interview that he wouldn't pass his wealth to his two kids. And his net worth at the time was around $160 million. And he said, and I quote, I don't want to leave great sums to the next generation. I think inheritance is quite distasteful. My philosophy is to get rid of it or give it away before you go. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on his philosophy on inheritance. Now, I have a different view on generational wealth and I've been saving and investing for my daughter for the past 10 years. These three investment accounts I'm going to discuss in this video could help your kids set up for college, retirement, or buying a car. And I really like this quote, leave the children enough so they can do anything, but not enough so they can do nothing. So the first one I want to touch on is the custodial Roth IRA. And in full disclosure, I don't have one set up for my daughter yet because she doesn't have an active, active income. It makes sense because she's only 10, right? So I plan to set it up when she turns 14 or whenever she gets a part-time job in high school. What you probably didn't know is that there are no age restrictions to open a custodial Roth IRA, but your child must have earned income in order to contribute to the custodial Roth IRA and earn income in the eyes of the IRS needs to be a W-2 job or from self-employment like babysitting or dog walking. Your child can earn an unlimited amount of money and still be claimed as a dependent as long as the child doesn't make more than half the child's own expenses. There are also different tax thresholds for your children to file tax returns, so make sure to talk to your CPA or look up IRS publications for rules and regulations. So the custodial Roth IRA means that you're in charge of your child's Roth IRA until the child turns 18 or 21 years old, depending on the state where the child lives. When your child becomes an adult, then you'll need to do a rollover from a custodial Roth IRA to a regular Roth IRA under your child's name. I know Schwab, Fidelity, and Vanguard all offer a custodial Roth IRA, and the rules are pretty much the same as the regular Roth IRA. The contribution limit is $6,500 for the tax year 2023 or the total earned income for your child in the same tax year, whichever is less. So for example, if your child uh, earned $2,000 for babysitting in 2023, then $2,000 is the maximum amount your child can contribute to the custodial Roth IRA. If your child earns $7,000 for working at McDonald's in 2023, then $6,500 is the maximum amount your child can contribute to the custodial Roth IRA for the tax year 2023. And the same withdrawal rules apply to the custodial Roth IRA. Whatever your child contributes to the custodial Roth IRA is in after-tax dollars. So the Roth IRA will grow tax-free and the child can withdraw the contribution at any time penalty-free. You just can't withdraw the interest the earnings that accrue inside the Roth IRA until they turn 59 and a half. And it's super easy to open a custodial Roth IRA. You just need your child's social security number, birthday, and other personal information. If you have multiple children, you have to open a separate Roth IRA for each child. You cannot have a combined Roth IRA for multiple kids. And because their earnings of most kids are so low that they pay literally little to no income taxes, it's like making Roth IRA contributions with almost no taxes owed. And I want you to take a look at this compound interest calculator here. Let's say my daughter is 14 and contributes 6,500 to her Roth IRA for the tax year 2023. That 6,500 will turn into $156,000 by the time she turns 60 with a 7% average annual return. And if she consistently contributes to her Roth IRA for the next 46 years with a $500 increase every two years, that's over $3.3 million just in her Roth IRA by the time she's 60. And she'll hit $1 million by age 45 and $2 million by age 53. And I really wish my parents had taught me this. And this is why financial education is more important than opening a custodial Roth IRA for your child. You need to teach your child the power of compound interest and why it's important to start investing early. And I've talked to several people on their FIRE journey that they would match their kids' Roth IRA contributions. And I thought this was a really good idea. For example, if your kid brings in $8,000 for the year by working part-time jobs, you can offer to contribute half the Roth IRA on your kid's behalf. And your kid's uh, kid contributes the other half. Your kids 
might not get super excited about the Roth IRAs now, but they will appreciate you many years from now. And don't forget to download my financial independence resources, including all the spreadsheets that I just showed you for absolutely free by visiting firesidechat.com slash contact. You should also check out my firesidechat shop to check out the books and equipment I use at firesidechat.com slash shopping. And the second investment account I have for my daughter is the 529 college savings plan. And what's really nice about the 529 is that I can transfer the beneficiary if my kid ends up not using it. And I can transfer it to anyone in my family tree, like my grandkids one day, my wife, or even myself. And the law changes allows me to use the 529 for her uh, her K-12 education and not just for four-year college, master's degree, or professional certificates. You can use up to $10,000 a year to pay for kindergarten through 12th grade uh, tuition-related expenses for public or private schools. Vanguard actually has a really good college tuition calculator in future dollars and i'll put their link in the description below if the link doesn't work you can always google vanguard 529 college tuition calculator but you can calculate how much you have to invest every month to cover your child's four-year college tuition expenses you also want to make sure to look up the 529 plan in your specific state there's no annual contribution limit for the 529 plan but there's a limit on the total contribution based on the state. And some states even allow you to make a lump sum contribution by using the five-year gift tax averaging rule. If you have the money to do that, make sure to talk to your CPA or a state attorney to find out how you can save money on your taxes. And I've been consistently contributing to my daughter's 529 with Vanguard since the day she was born. This video is not sponsored by Vanguard. But anyway, you have two approaches with the 529 investment strategy. You can be either hands-off or hands-on with the investment options. If you wanna be hands-off, then you can always do the target date enrollment portfolios, which is pretty much the same concept as the target date retirement funds. And you can pick the target date funds based on your child's graduation year. And I chose the hands-on approach by investing in the individual 529 portfolios. And obviously this is not in any form of financial advice. I chose the S&P 500 index portfolio and the growth index portfolio. Both of them have performed really well for the past 10 years with a 12% average annual return. Are they gonna perform at 12% for the next 10 years? Nobody knows, but I will continue to contribute to those funds until she goes to college. And what's also nice is that there are no time or age limits on using a state 529 college savings plan. The money I contributed and the earnings and interest that accrue inside the 529 can be kept indefinitely. And I can hold the 529 plan forever. If my daughter ends up not using the 529, then I can always change the beneficiary to a qualifying family member penalty-free at any time. Even if I don't have anyone to transfer the 529 to, I'm gonna continue to contribute to the 529 plan because it's a part of my generational wealth building process. And I can pass it on to my grandkids or other family members if I choose to. And President Biden just signed new laws to make major changes to the 529 that will take effect in 2024, and I'll be able to roll over up to $35,000 from the 529 college savings plan to my kid's Roth IRA. And keep in mind that $35,000 is the lifetime cap for the rollover transfers. The 529 account also has to be open for at least 15 years, and if you change the beneficiary, the 15 year clock will restart. So you wanna keep that in mind as well. You also can't roll over what you contributed in the last five years in the 529 over to the Roth IRA. You can check out this video about the major law changes linked in the description below. By the way, if you're interested in joining my private individual, couple, or group sessions, or my private Facebook group, you can sign up for the private group on my main YouTube page or by visiting firesidechat.com slash coaching to discuss your financial independence journey. And the third investment account is the UTMA or UGMA account. And I have a fourth account, but it's not really an investment account, so I'll save that for the end of this video. The big difference between UTMA and UGMA is that a UGMA is limited to cash, stocks, mutual funds, bonds, and other securities. A UTMA 
can have all of those securities plus real estate properties. And they're all structured like trust, but for minors. UGMA stands for Uniform Gift to Minors Act, and UTMA stands for Uniform Transfers to Minors Act. And you can essentially use UTMA or UGMA to cover your child's educational expenses. Just like the custodial Roth IRA, you'll need to open a separate account for each of your children. And I've had uh, one open for my daughter with Vanguard for several years now, and it was a really easy process to open one. And I opened a UTMA account for my daughter, not just for education, but for many other expenses. So when she turns 18 years old, she will have full control of the UTMA account. She can use it to make a down payment on her apartment, or house, buy a car, or use it for something that will help her in the real world, right? And But keep in mind that there aren't any tax advantages for opening a UTMA or UGMA. If I were to transfer my assets from UTMA to the 529 college savings plan, I would have to liquidate all of the assets inside the UTMA and pay capital gains taxes on the profit I make. I also have to pay taxes on any capital gains if I sell any investments or if I receive any dividend payments inside the UTMA or UGMA. I'm also aware that these accounts can be transferred to another beneficiary like the 529 college savings plan. My daughter is the only beneficiary of UTMA and because it's considered a gift to my child, I need to be aware of the annual gift tax exclusion, which I think is around $17,000 for the year 2023. And I don't contribute much to my kid's UTMA, but I know she'll have enough by the time she's 18 or 21 to help her get started on adult life. And if you don't like the fact that your child will have full control of the UTMA account at age 18, then you should consider con uh, establishing a trust instead of opening a UTMA or UGMA because the trust will allow you to dictate the age that the child receives the assets. And while you're teaching your kids how these investment vehicles work, I encourage you to open up a fourth account which is a checking account for kids. And I opened a custodial checking account with JP Morgan Chase a few years ago so my daughter could practice saving and spending the money she earned. She still uses it today. And it's been a learning experience for her for sure. And she went to Target one time and bought something for herself that cost $4.99. And when she got to the cash register, she asked me why it was $5.40 instead of $4.99. And that's when I told her, taxes baby girl taxes and do you know what she told me i hate taxes and she's learning all about finances now so she's not gonna be scared to deal with money when she's an adult and i encourage every parent watching this video to start educating their kids on the basics of saving and investing money these schools sure as heck aren't gonna teach our kids but if you want to know more about how to invest in your roth ira or create generational wealth be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.